A couple summers ago, I got the chance to visit Alex Winstead from Cascadia Mushrooms at his farm in Washington. I originally planned to do a video on it, but the audio was so bad that I never ended up making it. Still, I thought it'd be fun to share some of the clips and take you on a quick tour of the mushroom farm. Alex started in 2005 honing his skills as a mushroom cultivator and now grows hundreds of pounds of fresh mushrooms every week sold at farmers markets and delivered to local grocery stores. Alex's farm is designed for efficiency and you can tell he's put a lot of thought into the flow of his operation. Each step is designed to lead directly into the next and even the physical layout allows for seamless transitions. So let's go through each one of these processes step by step. First up is preparing the substrate for the mushrooms to grow on. Alex uses locally sourced hardwood sawdust for the bulk of his substrate. It's a standard mix of red alder sawdust, which is delivered right to his farm. Having an abundance of cheap local hardwood is a major advantage to growing in the Washington area, since it's basically a waste product from other industries. At the farm, Alex grows king oysters, pearl oysters, pink oysters, reishi, lion's mane, pepino, and shiitake, all of which are grown on basically the same substrate mix. The supplement used at Cascadia is wheat middlings, also known as wheat mill run. It's a non-flower byproduct of the wheat milling process. It's a cost-effective organic supplement that works by nutrifying the block and gives the mycelium what it needs to produce the best fruit. In addition to this, they also mix in whole organic wheat berries to that substrate. This adds some extra protein and carbohydrates, but it's primarily used to absorb water during the sterilization process, helping to retain moisture in the final mix. Even though Alex grows a wide variety of species, the vast majority of his crop is organic shiitake. When asked why he sticks to shiitake, Alex explained that shiitake is what customers want. Even though the desire for exotic gourmet mushrooms is growing every day, most people still just want the mushrooms that they're most familiar with. In this case, it's shiitake. So next up is actually packing the substrate into bags and sterilizing. In order to pack the bags, the hardwood sawdust is mixed in a large custom-made hopper with the bran and grain added after for nutrition. Water is added until the substrate has just the right consistency and then is packed into plastic autoclavable bags. Once the bags are packed, the substrate needs to be sterilized in order to kill off any potential contaminants. Now installed just downstream of the mixing area is a large capacity autoclave able to sterilize about 600 bags in a single run. The autoclave runs at 15 psi and takes a full day to complete the sterilization cycle from start to finish. Alex is able to load up the packed bags onto carts that worked with a system of pallet jacks and rails. This makes it super easy to roll the bags into and out of the autoclave and really minimizes the manual handling of the bags. Now directly downstream from the autoclave is a good sized laboratory which is nicely outfitted with a large laminar flow hood and a stainless steel tabletop. Standing outside this lab, you can feel a constant stream of air pushing out of the doors. This positive pressure keeps the inside of the lab clean and minimizes any kind of contamination from outside air. Now the bags are inoculated with grain spawn by a team of three people, one adding the spawn, one sealing the bags, and one mixing the bags up by hand. Since Cascadia Mushrooms inoculates approximately 1,500 to 1,800 bags per week, it's good to have this system nailed down. Any extra steps or loss in efficiency here can really add up over time. Next up, once the bags are inoculated, is incubation and fruiting. A great wide door at the back of the lab leads directly into the impressive incubation area. Here, the shiitake blocks are allowed to colonize for two and a half months until they're fully browned. This extensive colonization process helps to produce the highest quality fruits and the best yield. The incubation area is naturally warmer than the fruiting room and it's made that way because of all the excess heat that's given off by a large number of colonizing blocks. At around 74 degrees Celsius, the blocks can happily colonize at a healthy clip. At any given time, there's over 11,000 blocks at different stages of growth in this room. Once the blocks are ready, no special process is used to get them to fruit other than simply removing them from the bag and placing them in the grow room. The grow room is directly beside the incubation area and is the same size. It's in this room that the mushrooms are also packaged and sent for delivery. The entire area is fed with fresh air from a large air handler which can cool or heat the room depending on external conditions. Now this controls both the temperature and the humidity of the inside room. And as you know, mushrooms need certain temperatures and high humidity in order to grow properly. Of course, after the mushrooms fruit, they need to be harvested. 
Shiitake mushrooms are harvested only once since uh, second flushes are found to produce diminishing returns and introduce some unnecessary contamination risk. After the fruiting blocks are spent, they're brought out the back side of the grow room into a large compost pile. Spent blocks is a waste material for mushroom growers, but it can be a useful material for other farmers who are definitely happy to take these blocks away for free. At the time I was there, Cascadia Mushrooms was selling about 500 to 700 pounds of fresh mushrooms per week to farmers markets around Bellingham, also to a number of grocery stores and about two dozen restaurants throughout the state. Cascadia also sells fresh mushrooms, dried mushrooms, and various mushroom growing kits on their website. Now the bottom line is that small scale mushroom farming can actually be really difficult. Not just anyone can throw up a couple steel outbuildings and start growing gobs of shiitake for sale into the local market. So what is it that makes Cascadia a viable and flourishing operation? Although it would be hard to sum up in a few lines, I do have some thoughts on why Alex has been able to do what he does. First off is experience. Alex knows what he's doing and has honed his skills over many years of trial and error. Like many other growers, his first operation was a basement grow, which he scaled up over time. He's put a lot of thought into what works for his farm and his particular situation. This farm is just built around those parameters. He also focuses on mainly one species, which is shiitake. They have identified what species that's most relevant to their area and responded to what the market wants. Of course, they still grow in a variety of different species, but focusing on one strain of shiitake really helps nail down the efficiencies on the farm. Alex does have an efficient operation, and for him, that means outsourcing spawn and just taking that concern off his list of things to worry about. This way, they don't have to worry about scheduling spawn and all the other problems that could crop up with contamination, and they can just focus on growing and harvesting mushrooms. Lastly, Cascadia is certified organic. High quality mushrooms, entirely organic and fresh are in high demand. Alex knows what his customers want and he's able to deliver on this. So I hope you enjoyed this short tour of Cascadia mushrooms and let me know in the comments what you thought of the farm. Of course, if you liked the video, please go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're new, please feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see weekly videos on the magic of mushrooms.